Hello friends, my name is Real Emil and welcome back to some more Forza Horizon 3 and welcome to a brand new series here on my channel. So, for the longest time I've wanted to do a Power Lapse-esque series here on Horizon 3, similar to my Forza Top Gear Lapse series. However, none of the tracks have particularly inspired me, until now. You see, I've found a track that offers good balance of straight line speed, cornering ability and general usability. There's just one catch. You see, the track I'm going to be using is a technical point-to-point -point hill climb course, and if that isn't enough, it's in Blizzard Mountain, which means snow. So, this changes the dynamics completely, meaning it won't just be supercars and high-end sports cars dominating the board for a change. Now, some ground rules. Each of the five cars from every episode will get three runs up the hill, and the best time from the three will be taken. Each car is unmodified, save for the addition of snow tyres, which all cars going up the hill will be equipped with. Finally, in this series there is no themes, instead I'm going to be using the cards that you guys request, so if there's anything you'd like to see go up the hill, simply recommend it in the comment section, I'll be sure it goes around at some point. There is no limits on the cars you can request, you can request anything you want from race cars, uh, trophy trucks, normal cars, whatever you want to request DLC cars, it's all open. Also, if you want to see the cars other people have requested, there is a link below to a spreadsheet where you can see each of the cars that have been recommended. With that all being said and done, let's go and check out the hill climb course. The first car that will tackle the hill climb course is the Ford Focus Gymkhana RSRX, 600 horsepower, 663 foot pound of torque, 2,191 pounds with the snow tires equipped. This car is an S1 class car, 896 in PI. Anyways, the hill climb we're going to be using is Devil's Corner Hill Climb, and I will quickly give you a quick tour while the focus is going around. So you see those first, that sort of first quick two corners or so is uh, all tarmac, icy tarmac. Now that will probably benefit the rear wheel drive cars uh, a little bit more because four wheel drive cars and front wheel drive cars in fact might be getting bogged down by understeer a bit more than the rear wheel drive cars will. However, from here on out it is all snow. Uh, which really will probably in all likelihood benefit the four-wheel drive cars more than the rear-wheel drive cars. Of course, we'll find that out later because we've got a few rear-wheel drive cars uh, to go around the course. I will quickly say this Ford Focus is a huge amount of fun to drive. I think this is the third time I've done it, uh, sort of changed my opinion on my favourite car in the DLC. Currently, it is this Focus because it is fantastic fun to drive. You just basically go around the corners pulling the handbrake. It's much easier to pull the handbrake in this car than actually take the corners properly, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, yeah, it just wants to slide everywhere. It's a huge amount of fun. It's easy to drive. It's got really short gears. Um, and that really is good for a course like this course. It's basically a rally car, so it will obviously do pretty well up here. You can see, essentially, this course is made up of twisty, turny corners with some straights in between some of those corners, which really means it is going to be testing the handle in the vehicles as well as the straight line speed. And because it's a hill climb as well, uh, torque could also become a factor here, you know, the more torque you have and the more power you have, you'll be able to climb the hills a bit more efficiently rather than lightweight cars. So, yeah, it's a pretty interesting place. You'll see here, uh, we go through sort of a little slalom with the ice. You do not want to hit the ice. The ice is very, very bad. Do not hit ice uh, or else your car will spin. I don't care what it is. You, you're going to have issues if you do that. Uh, to end us off, we have some pretty nasty corners, actually, a few right angle corners. And uh, after that, across the line for the Focus. Next car we have going around the hill climb today is another four-wheel drive car. However, this one's completely different. This is a 2011 Lamborghini Gallardo Super Gear, 562 horsepower, 398 pounds foot of torque, 3,470 pounds of weight. S1 class car, 895 in PI. I forgot to mention the Focus is the most powerful vehicle here today, torquiest vehicle here today, lightest vehicle here today, and the highest PI vehicle here today. Uh, but the Lamborghini certainly isn't too far off. Um, when it comes to the Lamborghini, it's a great car to drive. Uh, Four-wheel drive, I do feel, is going to be a huge advantage on this track. Again, once the rear-wheel drive cars start going around, you'll see why I believe that. Um, and of course, Gallardo is fitted with four-wheel drive. Uh, to be honest with you, the, Gallard the fact that Gallardo does have a bit more weight on its side probably isn't too much of a bad thing. It does... Weight, to a certain extent, does make the car a little bit more stable, depending on the drivetrain and so on. And to be honest with you, that could help the Glado. It also helps that the Glado is pretty darn quick, and again, it's very nice to drive. Uh, it does understeer a little bit, uh, this Glado, to be honest with you, but of course you'd expect that from an all-wheel drive supercar such as this one. 
Um, yeah, I did enjoy driving the Galado actually, it kind of surprised me. Um, especially when someone requested the Galado. I wasn't really expecting uh, to send the Galado around in the first episode, but there you go. Uh, yeah, it makes a fantastic noise as well because V10 engines sound amazing. As you can see, I'm sort of, you don't want to pull the handbrake as much in this vehicle. The Focus was very handbrake happy. I'm sure we'll find that with some cars. You know, the rally cars probably like to be chucked around a bit more. You can't really chuck the Gallardo as much as you could the Focus, which means it's not quite as fun to drive. Uh, but if you get everything better, it will ultimately be a little bit quicker as we avoid the ice there. Um, there are quite a few bumps on this track as well. Uh, there isn't any too major. This is sort of your most major jump that you'll have. Uh, through there, so there's nothing for the cars to get too upset over. Uh, there's a few lumps and bumps earlier on in the course, but so far I haven't had a car actually have a real issue with that. But if we see any cars that are, you know, maybe a bit lower, uh, they could have some issues. Next up, we have our first rear wheel drive car to go around. We have the 1999 Dodge Viper GTS, 460 horsepower, 500 pound foot of torque, 3,450 pounds. S1 class 837 with the snow tyres. Uh, this actually jumps up about 100 pi uh, without the snow tyres. Anyways, uh, you know what I was saying about the first two corners being advantageous to rear-wheel drive cars? Yeah, I really felt like in this car. This car turned in so much more, uh, so much nicer uh, than the Gallardo did. It was much more um, controllable around there, and it was much snappier and probably quite a bit quicker. However, you can start to see where the Viper is struggling. Because it's a rear-wheel drive car, it is just spinning its wheels crawling up here. Uh, you can see the amount of snow being just chucked off this thing. I'm assuming what's actually happening is the car is just essentially trying to stop itself from getting buried. And it's not quite working out for rear-wheel drive cars. So, yeah, you can just see it coming up here. It is Obviously, obviously it's not going to be as quick as the Glado because the Viper isn't by default. But, yeah... Um, it is a little bit problematic driving rear-wheel drive cars up here. Ultimately, uh, the Viper was fast on the tarmac. It did struggle in the snow, though. Um, it is still a pretty decent car to drive. I did spin it once, but that was mostly my own fault being stupid. Uh, people often, like, think of these model of Vipers as, like, death dealers. You know, they're not particularly good to drive. They'll try to kill you. But to be honest with you, they really aren't as bad as people make them out to be, especially here in Forza. The 99's a uh, pretty darn good handling car, actually, on tarmac. But, yeah, you can just see it does struggle on snow a bit, just trying to get some traction in this thing. Again, it honestly feels like the cars are being bogged down uh, by the snow here. But, yeah, I did, still did kind of enjoy driving the Viper. Again, another car I wasn't really expecting to send up here. Uh, you know, as I said, you know, there's no themes in this. It's all just user-picked cars, and then I just go through and basically choose which five cars I want to drive for the day. Uh, I just decided I'd pick a relatively decent variety for this first episode. You know, get some four-wheel drive cars in there, some rear-wheel drive cars um, of all sort of different classes and backgrounds and so on. Uh, but yeah, the Viper, it just struggled a little bit. Speaking of struggling, we have our first um, proper American muscle car uh, to go up the course, if you will. This is a 1971 Plymouth Cuda, 425 horsepower, 490 pounds of torque, 3,880 pounds of weight. This is the heaviest vehicle here today. It is also the lowest PI today, although really not by much. This is an A-Class car, 735 in PI once it is equipped with uh, the snow tyres. Honestly, I was really expecting the Cuda to struggle up a course like this, you know. And unsurprisingly, it kind of did. Admittedly, to be honest with you, after driving the Viper, I was somewhat prepared for what I was going to get myself into when it comes to how rear-wheel drive cars will take this course. Uh, so the Cuda wasn't that bad. It did struggle, though. It really did struggle. Uh, you know, you could sort of feel all that power and torque just going to waste. Uh, in this rear-wheel drive vehicle. You know, uh, I think it's at the point where the rear-wheel drive cars, as I, as much as I said earlier with the four-wheel drive cars, you know, you do want a lot of power for this track, you also want a lot of grip for this track. Uh, I'm not really sure what's going to win out of power cars and handling cars, ultimately. Uh, luckily, we will uh, find out a little bit later on uh, with the next and final car, but... Yeah, I think the Cuda's issue is it just has too much power just trying to escape through the rear wheels. Honestly, I'm full throttle here. Like, it's not adversely affecting the car. I'm not... 
it doesn't feel like I'm sort of just sat spinning the wheels because I'm revving it too high or anything or just putting way too much throttle on, but it just feels like it's struggling and bogging down. Uh, the Cuda does suffer from quite a bit of oversteer as you'd probably imagine even with the snow tyres on it. It's also a bit of a floaty car, the suspension's a bit soft, admittedly you know for the lumps and jumps that might actually help the Cuda out a little bit. Um, it's an okay car to drive to be honest with you. The Cuda is one of the more scarier of the uh, muscle cars, one of the more powerful ones. So ultimately I was somewhat scared of what the Cuda was going to do. Uh, but it really wasn't that terrible as I come around here. I do take a little bit too much corner and the wing falls off. I do have to admit I actually think I prefer the way the Cuda looks without the wing. To be honest I know that's probably like heresy or something but there you go. Anyways, for these final two corners, Kuda actually takes them uh, pretty darn well, and then after that is, of course, just a solid a straight sprint to the finish line. Finally today, we have a 1994 Nissan Silvia S14. This is a Zenki model, I believe that's what they call this, if you're a cool kid. Um, 217 horsepower, 202 pounds foot of torque, 2,789 pounds of weight. Uh, least powerful vehicle here today, least torquey vehicle here today. Uh, however, I was very interested to see how this car would get on. You see, the S14, unlike the Cuda, well, the, it essentially has half the power of the Cuda. It has well over half the torque of the Cuda. Uh, so I was kind of interested to see sort of how a lighter, less powerful vehicle uh, would get on up here. Uh, the S14, it's an alright car to drive. I really don't like these things, to be honest with you, the S14, although I'm assuming that's mostly just been tainted thanks to uh, the amount of people that were just banging on about this car. Uh, so yeah, uh, the S14 has already been requested. I believe the 98 is still available for request though, so yeah, if you want to torture me again with an S14, feel free. Although to be fair, I shouldn't really be saying tortured, because again, this is an alright car to drive. Can get carried away a bit with its tail happiness. It is tail happy, a bit like the Cuda, to be honest with you, it's about on the level of the Cuda when it comes to its tail happiness, but it is a bit more of a solid chassis. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't lean about so much, and obviously it's not, hasn't really got that much power to spin its wheels with. Now, interestingly enough, this section is kind of interesting. There's loads of little uh, bumps on the road here, almost like little speed humps or something. Um, they're a little bit weird. I don't think they're going to adversely affect any of the cars, but they are certainly an interesting thing. This course is sort of full of a bunch of hidden dangers that you can't really see. And I'm sure some certain cars will be finding those as we go on with this series. You can just see, though, the amount of rear-wheel drive cars do struggle with the big inclines. You know, four-wheel drive cars could probably monster uh, these inclines. I, you know, I wouldn't hesitate to say that with all-wheel drive, these cars would probably be a hell of a lot better. However, I'm not modifying these cars in any way. I said that at the start. The only thing I'm doing to them is snow tires. I may put some cosmetic upgrades on the cars, just because they don't affect them that much, and to be honest with you, I kind of like the idea of throwing cars up here with rally lights and stuff. Um, so, yeah, maybe that'll be a thing. But yeah, ultimately, uh, the S14, it's an alright car. Uh, out of the Cuda in this, I probably enjoyed driving the S14 a little bit more, just because it was a little bit more taut and I didn't have to think about it quite as much. But either way, the S14 is across the line. Onto the times, and surprisingly enough, it's the Gallardo Superleggera that heads up our leaderboard as our first ever leader with a 205.559, which I don't know if that's a quick time or not, it seems to be. Uh, trailing behind it is the Focus going into second with a 2 minutes 7.328. Yeah, pretty far down on the Gallardo to be honest with you, I wasn't expecting that. Now you get to see the gap between the rear-wheel drive cars. Admittedly, the Viper is, of course, down on PI to the Focus, but I wasn't expecting it to be that much slower. 2 minutes 18.872 for the Viper puts it in third place. It just struggled with rear-wheel drive drive turn. I would say with four-wheel drive, I reckon that car could be at least five seconds quicker up this course. Maybe. I'll have to test that out at some point. Uh, the S14 goes into fourth with a 227.814 and the Plymouth Cuda goes into fifth with a 228.715. So as it turns out, maybe having a bit less power is actually advantageous to getting up this hill course. However, I do think striking a balance is probably the best thing to do. If that Sylv... To be honest with you, the Sylvia felt like it could do with 100 more horsepower. If it had 100 more horsepower, I could imagine it would be a pretty darn quick car up this course, especially for a weird rear drive car. 
Anyways, friends, that is it for this episode. Thank you all very much for watching. As I said at the start, if you have any cards you'd like to request for this series, please post them down below in the comment section and I will add them to my list. Just make sure your car hasn't already been requested. So yeah, thank you all very much for watching, friends. My name's been The Real Emil, and until next time, farewell.